feed won't just be affecting farmers. The next time you go to your supermarket to pick out a pack of sausage, check the price. You're going to see a 10% increase in all pork products. Guests relax here, surrounded by Polish salt like this one right here. Now, the belief is that this piece of salt can relieve you of what ails you. Anything from facial acne to eczema to chronic asthma, even to snoring. The fire started right before 5 o'clock this morning. Firefighters responded within six minutes. Thankfully, nobody was injured. Patch.com plans to use the audience as a focus group to figure out where voters stand, or in tonight's case, where they sit. Russell Singleton has been taking pigs to the market since he was a teenager. I love being outside working with them. He is the first person in his family to make pig farming a business. When our bank account gets a little bit in it, um, have to buy corn. Mm -hmm. It knocks it back down to nothing. So I, I never seem to accumulate anything. I'm just staying right close to the bone. Singleton uses organic methods, which means he's not eligible for government subsidies, which might help offset some of the higher costs. So for him, it all comes out of his own pocket. But the increase of hog feed won't just be affecting farmers. The next time you go to your supermarket to pick out a pack of sausage, check the price. You're going to see a 10% increase in all pork products. And that's likely to be just the beginning. That's all because higher costs mean farmers will raise fewer pigs. But what does this mean for pork consumers? Well, it means you can expect about 20 cents extra on your Junior Bacon Cheeseburger, which may not seem like much, but when you add that to a rack of ribs or a ham, that 10% increase starts to add up. But here at Old Timey Meat Market in Columbia, the assistant manager says customers shouldn't panic just yet. We actually won't see the, the change in the pork for three to four months. It takes about that long for the effects on the farmers to reach the actual marketplace. And he adds that there really isn't anything pork lovers can do to prepare for this crispy situation. Things hold well in the freezer, but really only for about three to six months at the most. So it looks like the pigs are the only winners in this situation, and they're happily crying wee 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 all the way home. For Carolina News, I'm Katie Year. And then I was sitting at work watching the morning news and Stony Creek apartment, that's where I live at. I need to go check on my apartment because I can't tell what's water on fire. D. Johnson looks on from his second floor balcony at his neighbors who are waiting to hear about their homes. It was still a little bit, but it wasn't, it wasn't blazing. But you can still see up in the roof bar where it still had a little bit of fire going. The fire tore through the first floor apartments where once stood a grill, a lawn chair, and a man's home. Then it quickly spread to the second floor. The fire started right before 5 o'clock this morning. Firefighters responded within six minutes. Thankfully, nobody was injured. For the owners of the six damaged apartments, their lives may have been spared, but their homes are gone. The man seen here rented the lower floor apartment where the fire started. And though too upset to talk on camera, says that he used two fire extinguishers provided by the apartment complex to put out the fire and neither of them worked. He says that if they had, he would still have a home. You've got a lot of material that catches on pretty quick. A lot of people don't realize that fire doubles in size every 60 seconds. So this fire was doubling in size very rapidly and spreading very quickly throughout the building. The Stony Creek management had no comment on the fire or the failed fire extinguishers. But as firefighters filtered through the belongings of those anxiously waiting below, <laughs> even something as simple as a pair of sneakers can bring relief. Katie Gear, Carolina News. The South Carolina State Fair is in town, and with it, a new form of school. Meet Cynthia King, the Director of Guest Services, but also the director of the fair's community school. We started it probably 1992. It took two years to get it going, and it's been functional since 94.
She said there was a growing need for workers to provide a family atmosphere for guests, and the only way was to have families work the fair. In order to hire families, you kind of have to have a school, and you have to have something that's going to keep them together, otherwise they have to leave at the end of the summer. With so many families traveling with the fair, they've taken the one-room schoolhouse to a completely new level, the mobile trailer school. Carly, a third-generation Carney and King's daughter, says that she has grown up in the carnival lifestyle and loves yeah. it. I was born out here. My dad's dad was out here and third generation out here. Carly's teacher, Linda Tidwell, has been teaching at the mobile school since 1994. Kids have the challenges of living uh, a somewhat alternative lifestyle, so I think having a really strong foundation in education balances the playing field once they go on to university. She teaches each level of students in a one-on-one -on -one environment. You need help. She's right there. Unlike a normal school, like you can't really have that. <laughs> the school is accredited and many of the students go on to universities. For Carly, with hopes of studying in South Africa next year, she has no worries about a smooth transition. So many students being around, that's going to be a little emotionally unstable probably, but I'll get used to it. But until then, the fair rides keep spinning and the homework keeps being graded. Katie Gear, Carolina News.